I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to another one of our water and chemical additives tutorials. In this particular tutorial we're going to be talking about impurities that we find in incoming raw water and the problems that it causes in the process and the final sheet. Well one of the first problems we might get is colour. Um, things like groundwater we've already said is the most contaminated type of water and if you've got vegetation there that rots blown in thrown in animals that rot thrown in die then as they decompose they'll create these humic acids and these humic acids tend to be yellowish in colour. So if we don't remove the colour from the incoming raw water then it can transfer into our sheet and give it a, a yellowish tinge. So incoming raw water the colour will affect the shade of the sheet. Another one is turbidity. Sometimes we call this suspended solids. So this is small particles of insoluble material. Now these things are very unlikely to be beautifully white. They're going to be black and brown and yellow and red, all different sorts of colours. And they can lead to three different problems. If there are largest piece of material, a largest fragment, then it can cause dirt specks in the sheet. If it's a bit smaller than that, it can actually interfere, it can get in between the fibres and it can interfere with fibre fibre bonding and therefore you'll get reduced strength properties. And if it's very very fine like silt, again it's unlikely to be white so just like having coloured water it will affect the shade of your sheet. So turbidity problems are dirt specks in the sheet, shade variation and the strength of the sheet. Then we have water hardness. In some areas of the country we have beautiful soft water in other areas of the country we have very hard water and of course one of the biggest problems of hard water is it will block up the pipes in the paper mill or uh, jets so it's basically blockages that hardness causes so hardness blocked pipes Not really you really call it a contamination but it's certainly a variability the pH of water can vary and if the pH of water varies then it can affect things it can affect things like refining as the pH goes up fibers are encouraged to swell they're more likely to fibrillate less likely to get cut at lower pHs fibers are less likely to fibrillate and they're more likely to get cut. It could also affect the wet end chemistry, things like retention and dye uptake. So pH can have a significant uh, effect on paper making and it's one factor that many people do not consider. So the problem of pH is it will affect the wet end chemistry and the refining. Another problem you might get, particularly if the water source passes through a mining area, you can get soluble iron salts and soluble manganese salts. And these tend to be yellow and green and brown. So they will affect the shade of your sheet. So soluble manganese and iron affect sheet colour.
Then we have dissolved solids, and dissolved solids could almost be uh, a collective name for the pr three previous things we've talked about, for water hardness and for pH and for iron and manganese. So dissolved solids can affect refining and they can affect wet end chemistry. They can, thing like, they can affect things like dye uptake onto fibres or retention aids. So dissolved solids will affect pickup of dyes, refining and chemical retention. Another one is dissolved gases. This is a particular hobby horse of mine. You've got many different types of dissolved gases and dissolved gases get taken into the water. If water goes over waterfalls or if they go fast over rocks, you can dissolve air in them. If vegetation rots in the water, you can get methane or carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide will dissolve to form carbonic acid, which is quite corrosive. Oxygen itself is very corrosive. So dissolved gases can cause corrosion problems. If you've got dissolved oxygen there, then that will actually feed any bacteria in the system. So bacteria are just like us. They need a nice, warm, wet environment to live in. Nice warm environments, the paper, the uh, paper mill water. It needs food to eat, which is the sugars provided by the fibres. And it needs oxygen to breathe. So the more dissolved air we have in our process water, the more the bugs will be encouraged to grow. And then you'll get slime and all sorts of problems. And finally... Dissolved gases can come out of solution in pumps. And then you get these big bang, 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 bang noises as you get this problem called cavitation in pumps. So you're not getting efficient transfer of liquid and you're damaging your pump. So dissolved gases, BCC, they will increase bacterial activity they will increase corrosion and they will cause cavitation in pumps. Then there are chlorides. Sometimes if the water passes over ground or through ground containing soluble chlorides, then chlorides uh, dissolve to produce um, quite corrosive ions. So chlorides increase corrosion significantly. And then we have bacteria promoted by dissolved gases. Bacteria will cause slime, it can be smelly, it can be colourful, it can be very sticky and that will, that will cause things like uh, slime lumps in the paper, sheet breaks, holes in the paper and of course if you're producing uh, stuff that's going to be in contact with foodstuffs it could uh, make somebody's stomach not well. So the problems caused by bacteria are slime, holes in the sheet and sheet breaks. And the final one I'll talk about is odour. You know you do get animals dying in water courses and they will rot and they will produce a smell and if that odour is in the process water that same odour will get into the paper and then when you wrap foodstuffs with that paper the odour will go into the foodstuffs and you get this problem that's called taint so that's a, a taste in the food that should not be there so the problem that odour causes is taint. Okay well I think that will uh, do for now. What we need to talk about now is a bit about boiler feed water as well as water coming in and feeding the process it also needs to fill the boiler 
to produce the steam to dry the paper. And there's one phrase you need to remember for boiler feed water. It's a phrase that everybody knows. SOS, you know, save our souls, help. These are the things that cause problems in boiler feed water. These are the things that we do not want, SOS. The first one is silica. If silica deposits inside our boiler, then it will restrict heat transfer, making our heat transfer very inefficient. I'll tell you how inefficient in a moment. The second thing we don't want is oxygen. Oxygen is one of the most corrosive things, one of the most corrosive elements that there are. So if you have oxygen in your boiler feed water, it will start to attack the inner surface of the boiler and soon you'll have a hole. And finally, the other S, SOS, sodium. Sodium ions attack the iron on the inside of the boiler, causing tremendous corrosion. So oxygen causes corrosion, sodium causes corrosion, and silica produces a, a heat proof barrier. I said I'll tell you a little more about the silica, so here we are. Half a millimeter of scale on the inside of your boiler caused by deposits of silica will reduce the heat transfer by 28%. So that's a huge reduction. Okay, that comes to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. And I look forward to doing uh, more water and chemical additives videos soon. And I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much.